Now let's look at text styles. If I go ahead and select the text, then we can look in the inspector and find the styles panel. By default, we already have a style applied and it's called style one. We could, for example, rename it, maybe something like main style. In addition to that, we have a ton of other options that we can change that you'd find in any other software. This field here changes the font. We can select any of them that we want. And here we have our font size. This next option allows us to choose what format we want the font. In this case, we can choose extra bold. This option here allows us to adjust our line height. And here we can change the text color. We can also use this number here to adjust the opacity. As with many other objects in Rive, we can add multiple fills or strokes. To do that, we just need to use the plus button. In this case, we have the option to add a fill, or the other one is a stroke. If we want to remove any of these fills or strokes, then we'll need to hold the Alt key, which will expose the X, and now we can use that X to remove any fills or strokes that we don't want. In some cases, you'll see right next to the font panel that this icon appears. This icon indicates that you're using a variable font, which means that there's lots of special properties that we can change. For example, we can change the width or the slant. This tab here also gives you a ton of other features that you can add. Now you'll see if we change the font, let's say to maybe this one right here, that icons disappeared, which tells us that we don't have any of those variable font options. If we need, we can always add additional styles using this plus button you'll notice that the new style appears below our original style. Now, if we right click on the name, you'll see that we have the option to both delete and copy the style. Now we can also paste the style. So let's say we right click and copy this style. We can use command or control plus V to paste the style. So now, for example, we could change the color if we wanted and retain the rest of the style. Now that we know how to create different styles, we need to remember that if we want to use a style on a different part of the text, then we'll need to break our text into text runs. Once we've created our styles, we can use this button here to apply our different styles to the different runs. Now in this case, we only have one run, so if we apply the style, it's gonna apply to all of our text. As we saw in the previous video, we can also go into our text object and select our run, and we can also apply a style from there. Now, for example, if we want hello and Robert to look different, then we would need to create a different text run. And we can do that by selecting the text and then selecting the run from selection. And now we have two different runs, both hello, Robert, and we can apply a different style to hello. And now you can see that we have two different styles applied to our text. And you'll also see that if we go into the inspector and make any changes, then those uh, changes are reflected in the style. As we've seen, many of these style properties are also animatable.